All right, well, good morning, everybody. I'm Greg Fenvis, president of the University of Texas at Austin. I want to welcome the media here and uh, anybody that's watching the broadcast on, on live stream. Last week, we received incredible news that Dr. John Goodenough received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2019. Uh, this was an extraordinary achievement by a brilliant scientist, and we are so proud at the University of Texas that Dr. Goodenough has been a member of our faculty since 1986. He holds the Virginia H. Cockrell Centennial Chair in Engineering in the Cockrell School of Engineering, and is a faculty member in our Walker Department of Mechanical Engineering and the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Uh, John received the Nobel Prize for the development of the science behind the lithium-ion battery. And every camera here and every phone uh, is now being powered by a lithium-ion battery uh, that's based on John's scientific discovery. Uh, it's, uh, it's an example uh, of how science and discovery leads to the innovations that truly change society. And as we say at the University of Texas, what starts here changes the world. So John, on behalf of the entire university, I want to say congratulations on this tremendous honor. Uh, it's an apex of a truly remarkable career that you have had, uh, especially for the last three decades here at the University of Texas. And since every one of our 50,000 students has a cell phone, uh, we want to give you a little uh, memento that recognizes the impact uh, that your discovery has had at the University of Texas with a Longhorn cell phone cover. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. John Goodenough, Nobel Laureate in Chemistry. Well, thank you, but I assume that I'm to answer questions. So what questions have you got? <laughs> Laura? Hi, Dr. Goodenough. Um, first of all, congratulations, and we're glad to have you back in Texas. Um, you've seen a hundred years of technological innovation, and obviously your discovery with the lithium-ion batteries was a huge one. Um, was there anything that has been um, invented or discovered in the past 100 years that you um, maybe were, you didn't think you'd live to see? What, what technological innovation has been perhaps greatest that you've seen? in your lifetime? It's a big, big question the young lady is asking me. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm very pleased to have my last student as a fairly bright fellow, and that I'm very grateful for. I'm very grateful for all the support that I've had at the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, what do I see as a breakthrough? I don't know. There was a step from getting intellectual property to a technical development to where you get a useful product. I was very fortunate that the people in Japan, at Sony Corporation, did the technical development of the lithium-ion battery. So my hat's off to the Japanese people. Thank you. Another question? Yeah. Uh, what is it like, first of all, to receive this Nobel Prize to begin with, but then also you're the oldest person in 97 to get this award? So what is that like for you? What is it like for me? Well, I'm very, very happy when I'm able to get out of bed in the morning at 97 <laughs> and get myself showered. <laughs> you know, at 97, you don't remember everything, usually, so it's fine. But, I'm very happy to go through forgetting and, uh, yesterday from today and do one day at a time at my age. At this age, did you think that you were going to receive an award like this? What's that? At this age, did you think that you were going to receive an award like this? Well, you never think you're going to receive a nice award like but it, it happens in life. All I can tell you is if you live long enough, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> And we've been getting questions from around the world. So we have a question from the uh, UK Daily Express. What advice would you give to other people feeling edged out in their jobs at 65? <laughs> Younger people than you who are... Well, I understand. They have a problem that they retire people at 65. <laughs> I've been very fortunate 
to be able to come here to escape retirement in England and to be able to work another 33 years. <laughs> another question? Nick from Social. Yeah, we had uh, Emily on Facebook wanted to know, in your field, what is a problem that we don't yet have an answer for, but we need a solution for? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need better batteries, that's for sure. So, fortunately, there are people in this room who work here at the University of Texas who will make the better batteries that will change the world. Is that what it is here? All that starts here changes the world. <laughs> so I hope we will. Uh, on that note, we had a question from Chemistry World. A writer asked, what, in your opinion, is the most promising approach for making safer, more powerful batteries? Well, I think the first thing is you want to avoid trying to uh, use a liquid electrolyte that's flammable and uh, trying to plate dendrite-free uh, anodes from the liquid. So that we can do, and I have Hadi and his wife Aisul here from, who are originally from Iran, who <coughs> are working with me on good polymers and so on, and I think that we should be able to do that. Or they will be able to do that. I'll be able to just be the orchestra leader. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Kaori Saito from Japanese news agency. Kyoto. You have to speak very loud for old ears. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Dr. Pitotina. I have a question. What is the most biggest motivation for you to the research? Why you can keep working on research activity long term? You want to tell me what? What is your motivation? What is my motivation? For doing research. What? What? It's interesting, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you you work with nice people, and they do all the hard work, and you sit back and try to take as much credit as you can. <laughs> Chuck Murray with uh, United Business Media. Uh, I heard you were in London at the time the Nobel was announced and you didn't have a cell phone, so can you take us through how you found out about it? Uh, I think when I got home, somebody told me about it when after I got home. On, they were driving me home. I Hadi Khani from uh, Iran was my driver. Not that's true, but how did you notify about the, the Nobel Prize in London? Well, I didn't, don't think I knew about it in London. <laughs> no, no. They were interested in giving me a Copley Award, which was a very nice award. And I may have been on the, on the plane here when the other things were announced. That's fine. Did you have Go ahead. Can I listen to your view on Dr. Yoshino's work that uh, made lithium-ion battery commercially viable? Yes. Uh, what was uh, Dr. Yoshino's contribution to the discovery? Oh, Dr. Yoshino. Well, we uh, had developed the uh, LiCO2 as the cathode of the material, and while we were measuring the uh, the, uh, <coughs> the diffusion of lithium in the LiCO2, he said, "Well, that's fine. I'll just use lithium as the as the anode." And he made the first battery, which immediately was was uh, licensed by the Sony Corporation and they made the first lithium-ion battery. I'm Delia with NPR. Um, so now that you've won this prize, what's next for you? What's that again? What, what is next? What is what, next? What do you plan to do next? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm thankful for each new day. When you get to be 97, 
you're fortunate to have lived that long. So I hope. My friends tell me I have to live to 105. Well, I'll try. <laughs> but it's not up to me. Thank you. Nick, anything else from social? We had one user on uh, Facebook who wanted to know if you've been following the recent spacewalks on the International Space Station. They're in the process of replacing old nickel hydrogen batteries with lithium ion batteries. Well, I haven't followed that, but I'm happy they're doing that. And, uh, uh, you know, the lithium ion battery is pretty good, but it has its problems too. So you can't charge too fast, and you can't overcharge, you can't do quite a few things. So it's a nice intermediate step, but I'm, uh, I hope they make it whatever, wherever they're going, but I hope they don't send too many people to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for a couple more. Yeah. Now, you're a big reason as to why people are almost addicted to their cell phones now, right? For powering them. Uh, what do you think about making such a discovery that people are using every day? Well, you know, you just do one step. And I was un totally unable to anticipate what would lead to. Because, you know, the electrical engineers are pretty clever. And once they get something that works pretty well, then they can do all kinds of things that you never even dreamed of doing. So I'm very grateful for the electrical engineers. And what is it about UT and doing the research that you're doing now um, that you think will help propel others in the future to make great discoveries? What is it about being at UT that will propel others to make great discoveries? Oh, I don't know. Let me say, UT has been a... I've enjoyed being here for many reasons. Not merely the good weather, but <laughs> the nice city, but also because everybody at, at UT Austin has been very supportive and allowed us to do what we set out to do. So they left us alone. They didn't give us milestones and said, you got to do this by then. No, you just allow you to do your thing. And that's wonderful, wonderful for to have that kind of support. Okay, any more? Oh, yeah, Laura. Um, Dr. Goodena, what do you do when you're not researching or teaching at UT? Do you have any favorite pastimes? Do I have a favorite pastime? Well, of course, that's a very interesting tweet Trump, I suppose. <laughs> But, uh, and I, I like, I have a, 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 a young Chinese lady who comes and makes me some supper, and she plays my piano, and that's all very good. And so, I don't know, it's nice just to have good, good companionship at, at dinner. You know, my wife died a long time ago, so, uh, I'd be a lonely old man if I didn't have somebody to come and take care of me. <laughs> All right, we have uh, last. Uh, you want? We can do two more. You have one more. Okay, one quick question, uh, Doctor Goodenough. Did you, uh, when you developed the lithium-ion chemistries, did you foresee the applications in transportation or electric cars, or was that just not on the horizon? Oh, you just do one step at a time. And then, no, I didn't anticipate a lot of things. That's why the lawyers have taken all the money. <laughs> we, we, we've had the joy of inventing things, and the lawyers have had the, had the joy of taking the money. <laughs> Your invention uh, spawned social media and all sorts of un unforeseen things. So fittingly, our last question is from Instagram. Our last question from Instagram, we had a user who wanted to know, how do you stay inspired? How do I stay inspired? Well, it's very nice to work in a community where people are doing interesting things. And so you stay inspired because you have, you have colleagues that are interesting. And they have ideas, and you bump them off each other. Remember, dialogue is sacred. It's sacred for reconciliation, and it's also sacred for learning. So don't be afraid to expose your ignorance and be sure to enter into dialogue.
Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you.